मैं भी राइटर हूँ मैं भी कॉन्टेंट बनाता हूँ तो दिस दैट मोमेंट वे यूर जस्ट लाइक वॉचिंग एंड यूर जस्ट लाइक फॉक यू How dare <laughs> you be this good? How dare you? Technically, you and I are in the same profession, but I'm not one percent of this. How dare you? Movies and shows pe aate hain, and I uh, guess start with the basic question again. How? What's your rishta with the movies? Movies and shows are like the great love affair of my life, in the sense that. Um, I was very fortunate again that I had lot of pop culture exposure very young um and I was very lucky to be around people that were very excited by it and the internet hit just as I was turning 15 or 16 years old that's when I got proper internet access for the first time in my life you have all these forums where for the first time instead of just consuming movies or shows or etc there's people who are discussing them who are tearing yeah. them apart who are having like intense discussions about them and suddenly you start to see movies and shows for way more than just you know these little blocks of entertainment and so i belong to that magic generation that like today you take it for granted right that when an episode comes out of something everybody's going to go online and there's going to be 50000 theories etc whatever but good sirs and ladies i lived in the time of lost which was the show that started it all right lost yeah. was when it came out in 2003 that was the first show that the internet sort of went crazy about where they like okay we need to convene every week to discuss what happened and try and tear like i have it right now i'm just not pulling it down because it's too much effort but i have the entire lost box set on blue ray up there because wow. it's still wow. no matter how it ended and all of that stuff to me it's still just the gold standard in week on week getting people to come back and be excited and to throw questions at them and to just constantly have them going oh but what did that thing in the background mean and what did like today every marvel movie comes out and you're like oh what are the easter eggs in this and what are the easter eggs but man you didn't know easter eggs until you watched lost like there was i still remember there was a random game that came out at one point right and this jj abrams is the master of this it had nothing to do with lost it had nothing to do with cloverfield it had nothing to do with anything but people literally uska trailer aa gaya and people started being like oh my god is this connected to this thing in lost or like abram's clover field or this and that and then the game guys had to come and be like guys ours was one complete separate it was nothing to do with anything <laughs> like it's got please please leave us out of your discussions and then i was very lucky when i did bmm i had a very good film teacher um who really sort of opened up my eyes in terms of how you can read a film like how every frame made by a good director is packed with intellectual and emotional information and this is a story that i've told many times so i'll tell you the short version in 1999 on the 4th of july at 9 o'clock in the morning i went to watch a movie that i had won two tickets for in a contest mere ko kuch nahi pata tha ek trailer dekha tha picture ka naam tha matrix main theater mein gaya aur jo dimag aur gaand dono phat gaya us 2 ghante mein like i'm sorry to use this language but literally there's no other way to describe what happened it sort of cemented this feeling of main jo bhi karunga mere life mein na usme pop culture involved hoga i don't know agar main main writer banunga ya main picture banaunga ya main pop culture discuss karunga ye visceral feeling jo aayi hai abhi like nothing else has ever given me that in my life and i want to spend my life either like even whether today it's aib this that whatever right like the joy of it was just being this thing of hey i was part of making a video that made someone at home feel things today whether that wow. feeling was peals of laughter or emotions or whatever but to me the drug is that i will never forget going for avengers end game at 6 o'clock in the morning with a group of excited friends right and here are a bunch wow. of people all in their mid 30s who have gathered <laughs> like a bunch of 14 year olds going for a school trip because we wanted to be the first people to watch it at the first possible show before anybody had a chance to sort of spoil it for us and just going to this theater where there's 400 people just like you who have showed up on a friday at 7 o'clock in the morning dressed in like iron man masks and dressed in this and that all that experience of i still remember the first time i watched the dark knight in a theater again it was like one of those 8 a.m shows first day first show and just the audience losing their mind at ledger's joker right like to the point where i remember i finished that show and i immediately bought a ticket for the next show and sat again and watched that movie um to as simple as the first whatever else happened to the franchise later right nothing can convince me otherwise from the fact that michael bay's first transformers movie is a work of art again <laughs> just watching it with that 7am audience that first time and then again it was one of those movies where i called a friend and i'm like 
यो यू नीड टू वॉच दिस मूवी आई एम एट द थिएटर मैं इवनिंग शो के भी टिकट्स खरीद रहा हूं आई सी यू एट द थिएटर एंड लार्ज पार्ट ऑफ माई लाइफ हैज जस्ट बिन अबाउट चेसिंग दैट एक्सपीरियंस और इफ आई कैन एट सम पॉइंट इन माई लाइफ गिव दैट एक्सपीरियंस टू पीपल वेर इट्स लाइक इफ आई कैन इन माई लाइफ वन डे मेक समथिंग एंड वैसे मेक पीपल फील थिंग डन टू बी रोमांस वेट मेक्स दम फील सैड और इमोशन और वट एवर If I can make somebody feel thrilled, if I can make somebody feel excited, if I can make somebody feel roused, if I can make somebody feel like they're a ten-year-old or an excited eleven-year-old again, um, that'll be the day where I'm like, "Ho gaya mera kam earth pe. I'm retired now. I can die in peace." Uh, so my relationship with movies has always been a deeply emotional one. Right now, there's the poster behind me here. Is a Back to the Future poster because again, I remember how watching those movies made me feel. On that wall is Star Wars schematics because I remember how those movies made me feel. Uh, so my relationship with movies is a deeply, deeply emotional one. This is beautiful because this is kind of reminding us of why we started this channel. Because you have said pop culture, wali baat bolli. This is this is all our channel is about movies. It's the books, ultimate shared experience. Yeah. It's the ultimate yeah. shared experience. It is, for want of a better word, it is the ultimate secular shared experience, right? Doesn't matter what your religion is. Doesn't matter what your class is. It doesn't matter economically what you are. You buy a movie ticket. You go watch a movie, and suddenly you've had the same experience that millions of people around the world have had. All right. Today I can have one million problems with people. I can have one million communication barriers with people. But if I'm in a country where I don't understand anyone or don't understand the language, all I have to do is look out for somebody wearing a superhero T-shirt, and I know wow. that I will be within five minutes be able to find common ground with that person. and there's something deeply beautiful about that as a shared experience uh and and i think to me that's what that's that's the great thing about movies and tv shows let's talk about them now aap uh, bataiye like how do you want to go about in movies well, like what are the movies that you are into and recommend us a few so i used to as a kid and as a younger person watch a lot of movies but i think because we happen to be living in the golden age of television uh where people have really harnessed this long form medium to tell deep yeah. and beautiful stories I think over the last five to six years, I've moved way more to TV and streaming than I have to movies because a lot of times I'll start a movie and be like, "But I only get two hours with this character, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what's the what's the point? Why am I investing?" Versus like you watch the like you watch the Sopranos and <laughs> the story of Tony Soprano is like it's one of the greatest tragedy slash monster stories ever told. I don't know about you guys, but you ever have this thing where there are certain shows where you will finish them. And for three weeks after, I'll be like, "Man, को और कुछ नहीं देखना." Proper relationship के जैसे होता है ये. Yeah, like end of a relationship. मैं कुछ नहीं देख सकता. You try watching something else, you know, just like, "Chee, तुम तो नहीं सुपरानो नहीं हो." Right. Pilot, yeah. Pilot episodes <laughs> are like first dates for me. They are like yeah. first dates. नहीं मैं. Yeah. You might be good, but not for me, right? Yeah, now. exactly. Also, like, you know, no, it's okay. not even about not for me. It's like you know, you're, they are lovely, but I'm not ready. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not ready. ready. I thought <laughs> I was there. I thought <laughs> I was there, but I'm not. I'm just not. Yeah. Like okay, one thing that I love in movies, and there's one thing that I still feel like movies can do better than shows is, I love a good weird movie, like a movie nice. where you watch it at the end, you're just like, huh, uh, <laughs> what just happened? Um, and for me, I feel like one of those um, that's right up there, Donnie Darko, <laughs> right? Nice. One of the greatest pieces of science fiction ever. Unfortunately, don't have the DVD, but uh, Mulholland Drive or anything by David Lynch. David Lynch, right? Which is even as weather reports, <laughs> even as weather reports, like anything, anything. Like David Lynch is just what a trip, right? Like my favorite yeah. thing about a David Lynch movie is that I have no idea how I'm going to feel two and a half hours from now. It's like doing a psychedelic. I just know that I'm in for a weird and wonderful experience that I will have to emotionally process later on. Anything by Paul Thomas Anderson, right? Like yes. Magnolia, Punch Drunk Love, There Will Be Blood. Um, there's this beautiful surreal quality to his movies, and then of course there's just that entire thing of movies that make you feel things right like make you feel deep emotional things this is now not a weird movie we're back to more conventional this things um one of the first movies to ever make me cry cinema, cinema parody so right yeah. one of the first movies that ever made me cry and i have the dvd now but this and this again i will show my age here this was one of the first things they showed on star movies and um that's where i watched it for the first time uh, as a child and even then as a child without understanding the nuance of it etc just taken away by that beautiful story bit of this sort of relationship between the projectionist and this little boy and i still remember having it in my heart on that similar note this is a movie that i was exposed to in uh, film class so in case uh, uh, my film teacher uh, farida ma'am guess you're watching in the mood for love nice. huge tarantino fan 
I'm so grateful that I got to see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood in the theaters. And I feel really bad for anybody who didn't because it's such a slow and luxurious movie that I realized that if I'd watched it at home, I would have checked my phone five times. I would have mm. done a hundred things. But in that theater, it was just me and these beautiful frames. And I just enjoyed it so, so, so much. One movie that always makes me cry, Big Fish. Because I feel like it's such an emotionally honest story about emotions between father and son. Which I feel like sometimes is not always explored emotionally honestly. Uh, they're always either great mm. adventure stories or this or that. This was just this beautiful emotionally honest story or a fractured relationship between a man and his father. And I just really, really enjoyed it. Um, and I think, yeah, with movies right now, that's all I got. So, Abhi, like, uh, let's uh, uh, get to the TV shows. So, it started with, for me, like the first TV show that ever had my heart that wasn't like a children's cartoon was The X-Files. I was an X-Files fan in like the early 90s before I'd even heard of the internet to the point where I got the address of the official fan club and wrote them and mailed them a letter in America going, Hey, how do I join? I'm a huge fan. Anything related to the X-Files, I'm in. And again, that was one of the first shows that was all about conspiracy theories and this and that. Yeah. And just this idea of puzzle solving as an audience together. And really played into that same, I was in that same phase, right? World's great unsolved mysteries, world's great this, all of that. And here comes a show that's about the ultimate conspiracy theory, right? Yeah. Aliens exist and the government knows. If you had to sum up the 90s in one thought, it was this, all right? It was this, this idea that aliens exist and the government knows um, was one of the great cultural fascinations of the 90s. It was one of the first shows that had like this beautiful central relationship in the form of Mulder and Scully, where it wasn't just romantic tension, which they later sort of flattened it into that. But before that, it was just this beautiful relationship between two friends where one is an intense believer and one is an intense skeptic. And then just all the friction and all of the fun that's generated from that. It's one of those shows which has so many interesting characters that they don't even give a name to. Like one of the main antagonists of the show, his entire name is just Cigarette Smoking Man, right? Because that was his entire vibe in the show is that he would always just appear in the back of room smoking cigarettes. And that was just what the character was called. He was the Cigarette Smoking Man. And you just got emotionally invested in him all the same, which was kind of wild to see. Um, so I started with that, continued very much into the era of Lost. And then, of course, we live in the golden age of television. So it's one of those things where you say, what are your all-time favorite shows? I'll give you five answers now. And then the second this recording is over, I'll be like, but lekin wo wala bhi to tha. Um, <laughs> but let me try. The Sopranos, Six Feet Under, Parks and Recreation. Huge fan of Parks nice. and Recreation. Nice. Love The Good Place. Like genuinely nice. love The Good Place. I feel like it's just such a war. It's just this show bursting with just optimism for the human race. Star Trek, The Next Generation. And this reference, which again, I don't have a physical representation of it. So I brought it in a coffee mug. Doctor Who. Yes. Doctor Who is one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Avatar, The Last Airbender. Sure, it's a cartoon or whatever, but it is, I, to my mind, if not the most perfect, then one of the most perfectly told children's adventure stories of all time. It's like that Pixar level of just so much depth to unpack in this simple story of just children on an adventure. Um, that's another favorite show. Oh, Mr. Robot. It's a show for our times, mm. and I feel like it doesn't get enough love. Not enough people have seen it. I would 100% recommend that people watch Mr. Robot. Um, I used to love as a science fiction fan. Again, I loved Battlestar Galactica. My all time favorite shows as a kid, again, because of just the way they marry the ideas of mythology and just young people going through life. Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel. Dil Jeet Liya. As a 15, 16 year old, I was besotted by those shows. And I have chased them to the ends of the earth. Um, to get every single episode. Because also, this is this is the great thing about growing up when I grew up is, I grew up in the in, in the Wild West, the golden age of piracy. Um, <laughs> back when the internet, the internet had hit India, but rules about the internet had not yet hit India. And I genuinely believe that one of the reasons why living through the golden age of television and pop culture is because there was an entire generation of children around the world that just suddenly unlocked gold slash platinum level access to pop culture from around the world for free. And I don't think we have ever still academically fully accounted for the benefits and effects of what piracy did for a generation. So I think, yeah, those are my favorite shows. Um, uh, uh, can we also talk about your favorite mini series? We can talk about my favorite mini series. What are the mini series? I really love True Detective season one. Tremendous fan of Mayor of Easttown. I feel like Kate Winslet could walk on water. 
What are your favorite mini series? There's this HBO mini series called Olive Kittredge. It okay. stars Francis McDormand. It's like <laughs> I have this WhatsApp group like Chalchitra Movie Club for our patrons. It's okay. like <laughs> if you want to be in this group, first go and watch Olive Kittredge. Olive and it's Kittredge also, by the way, based on it's based on a book. Then there is Chernobyl, which I really like. Chernobyl was great. See, this is what I mean, yeah. right? You ask me in two hours from now, I would have remembered Chernobyl. <laughs> two yeah. hours from now, I would have remembered Chernobyl and the recommendations. But right yeah. now, I'm just like, oh, oh, uh, in shows, of course, not not limited, either, but Breaking Bad. Again, yeah. it's just one of those yeah. perfect stories, start to finish. It is yeah. a perfect story. There's this one I recently recommended on the channel. I may destroy you. It's oh, I've heard good. that's brilliant. That's the Michaela Cole one. Yeah, I'm it's saying, the Michaela yeah. Cole one. That is on HBO again. I recommend one thing every week on the channel. I have 140 episodes of the same. I'm doing 2018 from 2018. Right. And right. I have this one thing which I tell people. We love all OTT platforms, but I always tell if you can have access to one, always have Hotstar because it has the company. Oh yeah, HBO. it has HBO. Hotstar has HBO, <laughs> yeah. which is the most important one. <laughs> Exactly. HBO, like, I mean, you know, Netflix, Prime, they're all great and they've given us many great things. But before there was any of them, there was HBO. It's the HBO. Wire! How did I forget about The Wire? The Wire! <laughs> the Wire. Also, by that, for that matter, another great network, a very, very underrated network, FX. FX gave us Atlanta. FX again has given up one of my favorite shows of all time, The Americans. I have gone crazy trying to get people to watch it. FX also gave us the one I think the guy got cancelled, but Louis. I yeah, really FX like gave Louis. us Louis. FX is a solid network. FX is a yeah. really, really solid network. FX gave us Legion, which again is one of the great superhero stories that has been told. I have to ask you, you mentioned Lost, but have you seen The Leftovers by the creator of Lost? I have seen The Leftovers. Beautiful yeah. show. The only thing with The Leftovers is it's one of those things where it's like, um, please watch it only if you're in a good place in your life. Um, Seriously? If you're in a bad all... place, if you're Never in a depressed place, and I'm not using that word lightly here, um, if you're Very in a bad true. place in your life, do not watch The Leftovers because there's a level of grief that you can deal with and then exactly. there's the grief in The Leftovers. I have tried to watch it four times. I have said this in my videos. I have not finished like it. When... I have not finished it. I have not Are finished it because me? I have not finished it, dude. Like I'll watch five episodes and then I'll be like, you know what? I can't do this. This is doing yeah. things to my headspace. I need to go watch some Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Like you need a palate yeah. cleanser after the leftovers because there are episodes where it's just like, what are you doing to me? And uh, TV shows, mein, yeah. anything from India that you recently like? Season 1 of Sacred Games is just yeah. perfect TV. I think a lot of people who are 16 and 17 years old uh, and are watching this will not appreciate just what a terrible time it was to grow up with Indian entertainment if you were growing up with Indian entertainment in the late 90s and the 2000s. You want to talk about dystopia? You want to talk about a barren wasteland? Indian entertainment on television in the 2000s and the late 90s. Like there was nothing called imagination. There was nothing called imagination. So when these OTT platforms showed up and we started getting things like season one of Sacred Games, when we started getting things like Mirzapur, when we got Patal Lok, all right? Like there are days where my brain still can't comprehend ke India mein Patal Lok jaisi cheez bani. You want a mini series that head and shoulders above anything else. And this is not in India, it's not how to bring any HBO show, bring anything. Pata Lok is the shit. Like again, nice. I have not seen anything that devastated me like that on an episode by episode basis. Maybe writer who. Mm -hmm. Maybe writer who. Maybe content banata hu. So there's that moment where you're just like watching and you're just like, fuck you. How dare you be this good? How dare you? Technically, you and I are in the same profession, but I'm not 1% of this. How dare you? So, Pata Lok Deke, wo hua. One of my favorite things about Mirzapur is Mirzapur is a show that knows exactly what it is, and Mirzapur is a show that does what it says on the box every episode. I really enjoy The Family Man also. And again, it sounds like such an uncle thing to say, but kids don't know how good they've got it. The fact that there are these shows that are driven by great technical talent that are obviously written by very competent writers that have had the right acting, the right dramatic and the right technical talent and budgets assigned to them to tell stories that actually mean something. As opposed to this fucking daily soap opera thing where somebody washed a laptop and some shit that is only good for memeing and nothing else. I do believe though that we're in a very dangerous place right now with Indian programming. Because there's also a lot of horse shit that's being greenlit. And I'll be really sad if we sort of squander this potential golden age before we've had a chance to explore it to its logical depths and conclusions. Like I'm really, really worried about that. And I just hope that 
we continue to get good stuff and again in the indian context i'm not saying that like i don't want people in the comments be like oh are you saying there's nothing no there was some very good stuff but what was fuck all is how rare it was like you go back mm-hmm. and you look like you can count them on your fingers you be like ek sara bhai was sara bhai tha jo tum mm-hmm. dekh ke bol sakte the ki acha ye ek comedy hai jo acche writer ne likha hai dekh bhai dekh ke 6 episodes the jahan tum use dekh ke bol sakte the ki bhai ye bahut acche comedy writer ne likha hai hum paaj ke aise 15 episode the you be like bhai ye acche comedy writer ne likha hai versus now where it genuinely just feels like where on fertile land where many things can grow मैंने मूवीज एंड टीवी शोज से मैंने तो सारा जूस निकाल लिया एंड आई थिंक वानी वॉज चलिंग मी यू ऑल्सो हमने कभी किया नहीं है बट लाइक वी वॉन्ट टू टच अपन वीडियो गेम रिकमेंडेशन आई हैव टू रिकमेंडेशन राइट ऑफ द बैट फ्रॉम द फिजिकल वन वन इज दिस राइट द अनचार्टेड फ्रेंचाइज एंड माई सिंगल लाइन सॉर्ट ऑफ रिव्यू स्लैश रिकमेंडेशन ऑफ दिस फ्रेंचाइज टू पीपल इज वॉट इफ समबडी गेव यू अ कंट्रोलर एंड सेट यू कैन कंट्रोल द ग्रेटेस्ट इंडियाना जोन मूवी ऑफ ऑल टाइम दैट इज द अनचार्टेड फ्रेंचाइज इन अट शेल वेर इट्स लाइक ह्यो You go be Indiana Jones. The franchise has heart. It has humor. Um, unlike a lot of open world games today, it's focused and it's brilliant, and it just keeps sucking you in. And um, the other one that's here is Red Dead Redemption, where it's like, what if somebody gave you control of the greatest western ever made? And also, I don't have a physical copy here because I have a downloaded copy on my laptop. Um, but again, it is the game that I recommend to people all the time. GTA 5 there has never been and there will never be another game quite like GTA 5 it is bad shit crazy good it's like good fellas meets barry meets david lynch meets i don't know what it's a trip and a half and it is a game that has given me endless joy and those are the three video games that i'd like to recommend i also have two tabletop games that i want to recommend nice so i was like nice. we're doing games let's go all the way this i am very proud to say is an indian game called shasan and it's delightful It's got a very cool backstory. The game designer actually, a guy called Zain Menon, he needed funds to sort of make it, etc. So he took it to Anand Gandhi at Memsis Labs, who sort of looked at it and went, "Why don't we sort of create a prototype and then put this up on Kickstarter?" Which they did. And when they put it up on Kickstarter, it was such a success that they got like six or seven crore rupees in funding to make the project. And the product that you've got is this brilliant game, which is basically it's called Shasan. It's about politics. The oh. entire game is मेरे को इलेक्शन जीतने का एंड द वे यू विन इलेक्शन इज बाई इन्फ्लुएंसिंग वोटर्स एंड टू इन्फ्लुएंस वोटर्स यू हैव टू आंसर अ बंच ऑफ आइडियोलॉजिकल क्वेश्चन एंड द ग्रेट थिंग अबाउट द गेम इज यू रियलाइज फाइव मिनट्स इन टू द गेम वेर द सेकेंड योर अशोर्ड सक्सेस हाउ क्विकली यू लेट गो ऑफ योर प्रिंसिपल्स एंड आइडियोलॉजीज इन द गेम लाइक द होल गेम इज जस्ट अबाउट where you tell yourself that no you know i'm a really like progressive liberal person but you'll come to a point in the game where they'll ask you a question like you know should non veg food be banned and you'll realize that you <laughs> actually want to give a different answer because giving that answer will lead to you winning votes as yes. opposed to taking that position that you believe in and then two hours later the game is over and you're going to bed and you're like i gave up my ideological position to win a game no wonder <laughs> politicians give up their positions to win actual votes <laughs> Like it devastates oh, you. Like it's one of those games that devastates you. Uh, by the end of it, uh, because you spend the whole game scheming, um, and then by the end of it, you're like, I'm a terrible person. And it's a great game because it makes you reflect. And the other thing that I want to recommend is uh, something that I got into very recently, thanks to friends. Um, but it is one of the all-time classic games, Dungeons and Dragons. And it's one of those games where every time you've seen it in a movie or a TV show, it looks wildly complicated, and it's got like this huge table full of like different monsters, etc. All of that. That's all nonsense. The reason I love this game is because all you really need to play Dungeons and Dragons is a couple of sheets of paper, pen and pencil, and a set of polyhedral dice. If you have those three things, and if you have four or five willing and enthusiastic participants who are willing to use their imagination. There is nothing like this game. It is the ultimate open world game where all you have to do is act, and your actions will have consequences, and those consequences are dictated by the dice roll. And when I say you can act, I mean you can literally do anything. Like I was playing Dungeons and Dragons with some friends where we had a simple mission where we were supposed to go into a mine, negotiate with some people, rescue people, and come back. Now, if this were a video game, or if this were any other game, you'd be like, okay, I go into the mine, I do a little fighting. I solved the solve and I come outside. In Dungeons and Dragons, the entire mission started with the people in my team just arguing about who should go. One of them had a little pet who was not behaving properly. So the other person killed his pet, which then resulted 
in a one hour fight at the entrance of the mine between just the people in my party fighting each other before going in there because he was like bloody how dare you kill my pet now i kill you and i was in no mood to stop them because it was super entertaining wow. for 3 hours they were squabbling over the petty and these are grown ass men all right and they were squabbling over the pettiest shit and it was a ton of fun to watch and the actual work of the mission never got done and <laughs> still we hold it as one of our most productive sessions yet there has never been a game that operates as purely and spectacularly in the imagination as dungeons and dragons Nice. And if you're willing to follow the slight learning curve, it is an infinitely rewarding game. With that, I think I am all out of recommendations, guys. We are still left with music. <laughs> we are still left with music. Oh, holy shit! Yes, we are still left with music. What kind of music are you into? I listen to anything. I listen to literally yes. anything, and my daily playlist will include everything from pop to power punk to hip hop to Jurassic Park theme, uh, depending on what I'm doing. So I listen. Are you an anything. Apple Music person or a Spotify person? I am a Spotify person. Hmm. I am a Spotify. Are you an Apple Music person? No, 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 no. Vani is. Vani is. You an Apple? <laughs> it's just with with the. I love Apple. I'm an iPhone user. I'm fully hooked into their system. All of that. But what a nonsense interface Apple Music <laughs> has. Like, it's like who designed this? Vani has a video coming in. Why she uses Apple Music I over Spotify? Mean. Tell us. Apple Music for a very selfish reason. I love the bios that they give for every album and artist, and I think they're really nice. Please don't judge me. I'm not judging you. I'm just not at all buying your point. That's all. I'm not judging you at all. <laughs> but I'm just not for one second buying your point. <laughs> and also, like on Spotify, the like I do not use it anymore. But uh, there was a time when I came on Spotify and I tried to look for some music and I couldn't find it. So I went. That was a yeah, problem. Yeah, earlier Spotify India had a lot of issues yeah, yeah. for two years, yeah, but yeah, now yeah. I think they've got all their contracts and they sorted. The, yeah, this thing yeah, yeah, sorted. sorted. And obviously, and you know what else is amazing? YouTube Music, uh, because uh, that YouTube algo is just something else. So I'm a huge power punk fan. Like my greatest bands of all time. There's two, Blink One Eight Two and Green Day. I love Blink One Eight Two because it was the first band I ever listened to whose lyrics were funny. And another band that I worship for entirely different reasons that shall not be discussed on this podcast is Pink Floyd. And I came to Pink yeah. Floyd like a lot of people very late in life, where I was just like, "Yeah, Pink Floyd, yeah, yeah, 12 minutes ka gana." And there was a day in life where I was out in a green field and somebody put on Pink Floyd, and I was like, "Oh, now I get it." Ari, I am just realizing, like, uh, I have to still ask you, which are your favorite stand-up specials? One of the first specials that kind of tore my face off was uh, Chris Rock's "Kill the Messenger." Now, obviously, been cancelled for being a horrible person, and rightly so, uh, Louis C.K. But live at Beacon Theatre, before we knew all of the stuff that we knew, again, just sublimely written. Hannah Gadsby's Nanette, I think, is sort of a gold standard for the modern stand-up special, just in terms of what she does with the material and where she takes it. Dave Chappelle. Age of Spin, yeah. one of the greatest specials of all time. Again, just in terms of you watch it, and you're like, "What is this writing?" Just as a writer, you're like, "What is this writing? Mm. What is this way of connecting these seemingly disparate jokes? Wow, how profound, but also how absurd." And also, I don't remember the name, but I used to listen to a lot of Bill Hicks on audio, which I really, really used to enjoy. Another one that I love just because of how wrong it is, just wrong, 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 is Anthony Jeselnik. Has this great special called Thoughts and Prayers, yeah, which is yeah. just one hour of <laughs> him saying words that no human being should ever have come out of their mouth. It's an exercise in understanding just how far charm can carry you. Just the idea of if you can set context, and if you can have a certain amount of charm, you can get away with saying things that coming out <laughs> of an ordinary person's mouth would just be like, "Why are you saying these words?" Why are you speaking these words? <laughs> Please stop speaking, Anthony. Um, but he's just tremendously good at what he does, and there's a self-awareness, there's a cheeky self-awareness to it, um, where he somehow manages to say all of those things, and you still walk away convinced that Anthony Jeselnik does not believe any of the things that he has said. You don't walk away from that special carrying them in your heart, uh, which is something like, for example, which I feel like Jim Jeffries has not aged well, right? Hmm. Because in the sense that you watch some of his material. and you go back thinking i worry that jim jeffries believes this in his heart but the great thing about anthony jeselnik is that he takes it so far that you know that he doesn't carry any of this in his heart and he's literally just 
playing with words to see what is the most provocative thing i can say <laughs> literally <laughs> it's one. just literally yeah. it's a form of art right like where, like for example when you read douglas adams you get the sense that this is a man who is just playing with sentences to see where they end up and watching anthony jesenick is like that like he's got this one joke which is horrible all right i need to preface it before anybody thinks i'm a bad person i need to preface it by saying that it is objectively a horrible sentiment but it's just pure art and how it's constructed right where he's like there's a website where you can go to so you can find out like in case there are any sex offenders living and i went and i checked and i find out that just within a 2 km radius of my house there are 18 pedophiles within just a there are 18 registered pedophiles within just a 2 km radius of my house so why the fuck do we always hang out at mine Which is a horrible sentence, but when it starts, there's no way you're expecting it to end in that. And there's just the joy of within five words, you have flipped this yeah. premise so spectacularly. There's an art to it where you're like, there's a lot to learn about just brevity and about surprise and about things like that. Yeah. Um. And he ends it on a really, really funny personal note. I have one last question, which just came out after like listening to all these things. Uh. since you are also a stand up comic and there are mm-hmm. so though, so many writers out there who are like uh, choosing the route of like playing themselves in stand up comedy so matlab jinke khud ke shows mm-hmm. aate hain let's say uh-huh. like rami rami usof sure. ka rami aaya bahut sure. sare log aise shows bana rahe uh-huh. hain which is that stand up comic jinka jo ek like jo khud ke bare mein show hai where they play a fictional side of themselves that uh-huh. you like the most i thought that was something that louis did really well in terms yeah. of exploring the insecurities of somebody's personal life versus what they go through on stage pete holmes has this really good show called crashing which yeah, is yeah, sort yeah, of yeah, semi autobiographical yeah. i thought rami was interesting there's another one on hotstar called dave i mean he's not yeah, a stand up comic dave. of course but yeah, yeah. uh but yeah, i get great, right yeah, yeah. little dicky yeah. i feel like the show that really tore my face off in the last 2 years was fleabag right in terms of just obviously this semi autobiographical self lacerating yeah. look at things i thought yeah. that was outstanding what other do you have any recommendations in that space barry wouldn't be this no but like you no because barry, barry i thought of but ba- barry uh, barry yeah, is a separate yeah, recommendation barry. which i 100% Huh. I think Barry. <laughs> Barry is the best. No, Barry doesn't count because I mean I, I'd like to believe that in real life Bill Hader is not an assassin. Um, I would like to believe that Bill Hader is not a hitman in real life. So Barry, but ba- Barry is brilliant. Barry, I, Barry for my brilliant. money, Barry is the best thing HBO has made in the last like yeah, five years. Barry is. And this is including all the other great output. Like season two of Barry, though, went somewhere else only. Like there's that one episode towards the end where he's just like walking down that corridor and screaming in rage. I think काफी काफी तगड़ा एपिसोड था ये रोहन थैंक यू सो मच फॉर डूइंग दिस विद अस आई होप वी कैन कॉल यू अगेन ऑन चलचित्र टॉक बिकॉज़ देयर आर एनी टाइम एनी टाइम आई विल पुल आउट अनदर आई विल पुल आउट अनदर 185 बुक्स एंड डीवीडीज एंड लाइक ईट अप 2 एंड 1/2 आवर्स ऑफ योर टाइम फॉर नो रीजन हैप्पीली आई हैव अ म्यूजिक रिकमेंडेशन फॉर इफ यू लाइक सॉन्ग्स दैट आर वेरी फनी इट्स फ्लाइट ऑफ द कॉनकॉर्ड कम ऑन कम ऑन कम ऑन आई एम अ कॉनकॉर्ड्स ओजी I am a Concord's yes. OG. Watched all seasons of the show. Listened to all of their music. I got a joke between my girlfriend and I. Sometimes I just look at her and be like, "It's business. <laughs> It's business time." And we we'll both have a great laugh about it. Uh, huge, nice. huge Concord's fan. To anybody who's watching, please subscribe because you've got here a YouTube resources hosted by two lovely people who recommend pop culture. I know for a fact that there's people in this comment section who spend at least 25 minutes of their day randomly scrolling Netflix or Amazon without actually zeroing in on something to watch. Um guys, come on. Like here here it is. This is this is the resource that the internet demanded. And <laughs> you've got a bunch of different diverse people as well, right, who come on and recommend stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it stands to reason that on this channel there is something for everybody. So, please subscribe. Hey. Thank you so much, Rohan. And like before I go, I also want to add ki I had been wanting to get you on the channel for last one and a half years, and I'm via via try करते रहते थे कि यार I'm sorry it didn't happen <laughs> earlier. I'm really sorry it didn't happen earlier. I I I would have I would have loved to do this before, and I would love to do it again. Um, yeah. Because you know this ha, is at the like, intersection of two of my favorite things: loving the sound of my own voice and loving pop culture. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> Yeah and like it was one of those episodes for us where like I felt ki this is the reason why we started off with this channel it just like reminded us of, of that reason these are the conversations like, i live for these are the conversations yeah. 90% of the parties i go to 
um this is me where i will find two people who are exactly like you and it will <laughs> just be us for two hours but lekin ye dekha hai kya hey wahan baaki baaki logo ka drama chal raha hai politics chal raha hai ye chal raha hai and i'm like are wo sab chhod <laughs> clone wars dekha ke nahi <laughs> this is amazing and thank you so much for doing it and uh, hope to see you soon I yeah absolutely the pleasure was all mine yeah. this was a ton of fun thank you what a fun way to spend an afternoon